Hello, I'm Kate and today I want to talk to you guys about The Betrothed by Kiara Cass. I'm going to be doing a little bit of a non-spoiler review and then I'm going to be going into more spoilers and a bit of a rant because I have a lot of feelings. <laughs> okay, now for the non-spoilery review. If you haven't read it, this is safe for you to watch, don't worry. Uh, so this book follows Lady Hollis Bright as she catches the eye of King Jameson and as he starts to make it known that he wants to marry her, she has to learn what it's like to be queen, all the responsibilities, and a lot of stuff is weighing on her. Meanwhile, she sees this cute guy and starts to wonder if she even loves King Jameson and what life would be like maybe with this other guy instead. Drama ensues. Normally that type of stuff is right up my alley. Love triangles I'm kind of hit or miss with, but... I feel like if it's done well, I'd really love it. This one, it wasn't really done that well. Like my idea of a perfect love triangle that's just written so well is The Infernal Devices by Cassandra Clare. You love and feel for every single character and you love their respect for each other and it's just so great and they all love each other and I just love it so much. This book, I kind of had a big issue with the characters in that I don't know anything about them. I feel like I didn't connect with any of them. I didn't really learn anything about them besides maybe Hollis. And I really liked Hollis. Hollis was a nice character. She was really interesting. And one of my favorite Kira Cast protagonists doesn't say much, but I did really like her. Um, but I didn't really like either love interest. Some of the side characters were okay. Like I liked Valentina. I liked Delia Grace, but I did not like either love interest. Um, so that kind of was a big problem because if you want to read a book with a love triangle, you should probably care about the characters. I'll go more into detail in the spoiler uh, review about why I didn't like them, but yeah, that's my first issue off the bat with this book. Okay, so my second biggest issue was probably to do with, I don't know if this is really second or really also kind of my first issue, but the second one I'm discussing here is they use a racial slur three times in the book. I will put it censored somewhere. Um, but yeah, and that just really upset me because it was very avoidable. It could have been switched with so many other words. Like there was really so much else you could have said. You didn't have to say that one. And that really bothered me. Another issue I had was the insta-love. So I talked a little bit about how I don't connect to any of the characters. It made it really hard to believe in her falling in love with another character when they've had like six conversations. It just made it really hard and I'll go more into detail on how that infuriated me in the spoiler chat. Um, so yeah, otherwise not really much happened in this book. It was kind of, in the beginning it was a little bit slow, at the end everything was happening very fast paced, the pacing was just all over. I don't really understand. The ending was interesting, um, I really liked they threw some interesting things in there, um, and that's the really only thing making me want to continue the series, but otherwise, eh, I gave it 2.5 out of 5 stars. Now for the fun part, the spoiler chat. So if you haven't read Betrothed, please leave. Uh, I don't want to spoil it for you, unless you don't plan on reading it. If you don't plan on reading it, stay and hang out a bit. But, um, yeah. <sighs> Can we just talk about her relationship with Silas? Like, what is happening? She had, like, six conversations with the guy, and it's just like, I'm gonna marry you. What? No! What? That's just, this is major Anna and Hans right here. It really bothered me to see how quickly she was willing to throw away her life, uh, ruin things for her friend. I know she had set stuff up for Delia Grace. She didn't leave her completely abandoned, but she also kind of did. Like she could have really had a life for Delia Grace. And I also understand the not becoming a queen. She doesn't want to be a queen. That made sense. And I kind of liked that. I liked having a protagonist who really is not about the royal life and does not want to be in it. That was really interesting. However, it just, bothered me a lot that how easily she threw everything away not just for her but for everyone else in her life and for a man she had six conversations with like what's his middle name huh i don't know if there's middle names in this book but what is it like we don't know anything about him and when they're getting married we still have maybe had like seven possibly eight conversations maybe eight and they're getting married she is willing, okay, like family cutting her off like that, understandable because they're bad, so I can understand willing to sacrifice that, but she's willing to sacrifice so much for him 
and we don't know anything about him. The relationship just really wasn't believable. I had a huge issue with that. And then now that ending, this is really, if you haven't read it, uh, spoilers. So the ending was a lot. I just, I thought it was a really neat move. I mean, she totally red wedding it. Killed off everyone except what? The main character, the mother-in-law, the cousin, the sister. And like the king and everyone at court, but we don't care about them. <laughs> but like, everyone's dead. The question is, do I believe it? We didn't really see a body for Silas, so I don't fully believe he's dead. Um, I know she had like the grave marker and stuff, but I don't know, that fire could have made everything unidentifiable. I don't believe he's dead. If he is dead, that'll be interesting, but I would like a little bit more closure. I would like a little bit more certainty that he's dead. Like I want there to be mentioned that the body was found and she knew it was him. And it was definitely like without a doubt him because I've just, I've been through too much guys. <laughs> Fantasy books have done too much for me. I do not believe when a character is dead. If he is completely dead, then that's a gutsy move, but also it means nothing to me because I don't care about their relationship. Like in theory, I'm sad because that is just a sad thing to happen. But that could have made me sob. Like I would have been crying so hard if I cared the tiniest bit about their relationship and about all those characters. Like look at a child died. Like, except his only personality trait is the fact that he's a child. Um, the brother died, but he's just the shy one. I don't know anything about him besides the fact that he's shy. Uh, the father died. I'm sad. He was nice. That's all I know. He's nice. That's the issue. All these people died and I don't know anything about them to mourn them. Like, I can't feel sad about that, which upsets me because this would have hurt me. I want to be hurt, but... That's also kind of messed up when you think about that. I shouldn't, that's, that's not healthy. But I want this book to make me cry and it didn't and that really bothered me. And also the fact with the parents. So the parents, like they cut her off and then like two chapters later, they're at her wedding and everything's fine and then they die. They seriously rushed through that character development only so that way when they died, it could have an impact. Except it still didn't have an impact because I didn't care. <laughs> that was my biggest issue. I just didn't care. And it really bothered me. Now, who knows, maybe there's going to be a theme in the next book of the fact that maybe she was she was too naive to know what true love was. I would love if they pulled off like a shatter me type thing where like you don't know, like your first person you're falling in love with, it could not be true love. Like it could just be your idea of love. Uh, but they kind of already pulled that off with Jameson. So I feel like they can't do that twice. It's just bad writing. Just bad character writing and bad pacing that really ruined it. And I feel like they can't make that seem purposeful. Um, so who knows? In the second book, I feel like either Silas is going to come back and be alive, um, or I feel like the love interest is now going to be the cousin because he's really the only one she ever stays angry at. So there's something going on there. And yeah, I also feel like here's my theory moment. I feel like uh, Kane Jameson is behind all of this because he specifically said, he sent a letter very quickly, might I add, after the events of everything, still referring to Silas as her fiance. So that makes me suspicious that he maybe sent the Darkest Nights there to get there before the wedding and stop the wedding. So that way he can still marry her in the end or still use her in some way. So that's why I don't trust King Jameson. Maybe I'm totally wrong with this. I could be. I just don't trust him. I also don't trust the other king whose name I totally forgot. Quentin. I don't trust Quentin either. I don't trust Quentin just because he seems like a bad guy. I don't trust Jameson because he seems like a good guy who is actually secretly bad. I don't know if that made sense. But yeah. So those are some of my thoughts on The Betrothed. Um, yeah, I gave it 2.5 out of 5 stars. I don't know. It's still trying to fresh in my head. I think that's- I'm gonna stick with that rating. I don't think I'll drop it any further. I don't think I'll raise it up any further. Sometimes after I read a book and I think about it more, my review changes. But I think this is solidly 2.5 stars. It was interesting. I didn't hate reading it. I was continually wanting to read more. And I mean, it did have me hooked because everything was happening so fast. But it's not one I would recommend. Unless, like, this is your, like, 
favorite tropes in the world. Otherwise, I really wouldn't recommend it. But I will probably read the sequel. I am praying that this sequel makes up for all of this. That the second book comes and it is beautiful and amazing and reveals some things were purposeful. Or maybe finally makes me care about these characters who are already dead. You can make me retroactively sad, that's fine. I want the sequel to make me want to reread this book and like it more. Kind of like what happened with The Crown and The Heir. I want that to happen for me because I did not like The Heir that much. I liked The Crown a lot more and then now I like The Heir more when I reread it. I want that to happen with this. Who knows? I have doubts, but yeah, those are my thoughts on The Betrothed. So what do you think? Did you read it? Did you like it? If you didn't read it, are you going to? If you didn't read it and you stayed here till the end, good for you. Props. Um, though also, I'm sorry if I spoiled everything you didn't want to be spoiled, but I did give you warnings, so I'm not sorry. Anyways, yeah, I hope to post more here on YouTube. You know I've been posting on TikTok a lot, but I hope to move that over to YouTube. I'm not moving to YouTube totally. I just want to post like maybe a couple times a month or if I can post once a week, that would be the dream. Uh, but I'm thinking two times a month minimum. So we'll see. Anyways, thank you. Like, comment, subscribe, all that cliche YouTube stuff. And yeah, I would love to hear your thoughts on The Betrothed because I still need to rant a little bit more. This didn't, this didn't take all of my ranting out of me and I, I need to talk to people about it. So yeah, let me know below. Oh my God, some kids are sitting frozen outside. That is so cute.